Hello everybody, this is Kyoto Viva File, and today they're doing road work outside my place, but this is the only time I have to record today, so hopefully it won't be very disruptive. It's been mostly quiet for the last hour. We'll see what happens. Cue music. Today, I'm going to tell you about some of the books that I read for Nonfiction November. Half of the Nonfiction November books that I read were for my other video that is hopefully coming next week. I am so excited. I feel like I've hyped it up too much, but it is a review video. I'm going to discuss some books all around the same theme. And I am just really excited because it's one of those videos that I've been planning for a while. I've been putting some work in, so hopefully you'll like it. Also, I know I haven't been uploading, life just got crazy. I will definitely take that into consideration when discussing my goals and channel plans for next year. I have five books to tell you about. I feel like I should have looked up the prompts for Nonfiction November. I remember Border and I remember Element. I do not remember the other two. Let's just... Secret! Secret was the other one and record record yeah well uh how was it november was a really really it was a month it was a lot it had a lot of amazing things in it it had a lot of stress in it but i read some of the best things that i've read this year i think yeah definitely definitely actually one of the best things that I've read this year, I finished the first few days of December. But I'm going to have a lot of stuff to wrap up in December, so I'm just moving it here, okay? Just go with it. Let's start with the audiobook, as I said, which works for record, although I have another book that works for record. It can also work for element, because it's out of my element, because it was an audiobook, and I do that now sometimes. I have tried a lot of different audiobooks, definitely, real quote-unquote non-fiction it doesn't work for me i've tried a couple of memoirs and they both worked for me including this book that is clothes 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 boys 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 music 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 maybe not in that order but with albertine i'll talk about this book in a second but audiobooks more generally i am still not especially good at them as in i'm still not super able to focus on them i still find boring to listen to things that i would rather be reading because that's just how i learn and how i process information that said i still enjoy things that feel like a podcast or memoirs that are more confessional and also let's be honest if you miss a tiny bit you're not gonna be crushed. I am now trying Heroes or Mythos by Stephen Fry, because I do like how he reads stuff. If not, I'm just gonna switch to one of his memoirs. Um, because again, even though um, the whole sort of Greek thing kind of feels like stories that you should listen to, I still get very distracted. I, I just, I don't know, I have a hard time. Anyways, we'll see. This one was a memoir that I've wanted to read for a long time, but I never just managed to pick up. Uh, Viv Albertine was the guitarist in the Slits, uh, I want to say 60s or 70s band. Um, I might be off in the timeline there. Anyways, um, the memoir is called that because she was always obsessed with all three and it is just a very straightforward memoir, but she's had like a very interesting life. She was not very talented initially as a musician, as she had to like really work for it in a way that for her sort of the being in a band came first and the musicianship came later. But it's one of those examples where, you know, hard work really did pay off. She also uh, has been a ceramicist and a director so she's done it all she's a very interesting woman and she is hilarious her voice this is not read by her but like the person who reads it um creates just such a convincing voice for her so cheeky i love when she connects her personal experience to sort of not broader topics in sort of cultural criticism sort of way but she does have really um on point and smart observations about music and gender 
politics within that space or what fashion meant for a certain group of people. She has a lot of just really interesting anecdotes that turn into intelligent observations about life and the world and I really enjoyed that. That said, sometimes the specific anecdotes just went on and on. I was like, okay, I, I get it, but this is not that interesting. So it really depends. I like how honest she is. She talks a lot about like bodies and bodily fluids and she's not like squeamish about it. She's honest about the things she regrets, the things she doesn't. And I don't know, she carries that sort of punk aesthetic, not like a badge of honor, but also she's not ashamed of it. And it was really refreshing. I really enjoyed it. Okay, now um, let's start with the book that is the Loki overdue book club pick for November. I am going to talk about how I'm going to catch up with that project, which I will do on the goals video that's coming up. But for now, suffice to say that I really, really enjoyed this. I wasn't in it very much at first. So like this, okay, first of all, this is a collection of essays that coalesce into one book. And it's not as much as landscape as I would say Wanderlust. This is more about the abstract idea of being lost both physically, emotionally, mentally, also losing someone, losing a place, what it means to go back to a place. So it is very literary, it's very abstract, it was beautifully written. My favorite sections were sections where um, that are titled The Blue of Distance, that is a recurring topic, which again, makes the book as almost a path that you're circling, um, and it's very interesting. There were definitely sections that I liked more. Definitely, I wasn't in it at the beginning. I was like, oh, I have I made a huge mistake? <laughs> but no, it's actually really, really great. I just got a while to get into it. Maybe also because of just where my head was at at that point, but I really enjoyed it. I will discuss it more whenever the video comes up. Um, I will have to review some stuff. But yeah, I just really recommend it. If you like that sort of lyrical, philosophical, but not super academic, but rather more like vibey essay, um, I think you'll like this. Of course, Rebecca Solnit also writes like academic stuff beautifully. But in this one specifically, it's not that there is no erudition because there definitely is there are so many authors and books and like the intertextuality is definitely there however it feels much more personal and much more internal and emotional than some of her other work that i've read which by the way i've never read a full book by her um this was my first one so i'm really excited i got to it and if you're interested again in the idea of grief losing lost looking for stuff um, both in a physical and an abstract sense highly recommend actually quite related to that a book that i am so heartbroken that is not translated to english hopefully it will be at some point volverse palestina by lina meruane which you can translate as to become palestinian to become a palestinian woman or becoming a palestinian woman this is one long essay and another short essay all about Lina Meruane taking this trip to Palestine. She is of course Chilean of Palestinian descent. She also lives in New York which is very interesting. Because I didn't know the chronology I hadn't realized that she was living in New York at the time of 9-11 which is fascinating to read from her perspective. She also relays some conversations here especially with an Israeli, I think, or Palestinian author. But like he has a complicated situation because he's married to, again, either a Palestinian woman or an Israeli woman. Like that is sort of the conflict. There are sections that are sort of quote unquote censored, although you can still read them, but it's sort of this exploration of what is left unsaid on the page and the power of the page. And actually, the second essay is more focused on the role of the writer, the role of the writer in political conflict, and the power or lack thereof of the author. And she engages especially with 
Amos Oz and David Grossman as authors and what they've declared through their writing uh, publicly. And so it is fascinating and it's so well written. She focuses on language both conceptually and through form. Oh my God, the meditations on language and memory and what language encodes and carries. And these are observations that feel like they are there in every single book about trauma and conflict and war. But the way Lina Marana does it is so illuminating and it's so just beautiful to read and so engaging and so intellectually stimulating and emotionally charged. I just don't know how she does it. She's definitely one of my favorite authors. She's great. If you are going to read one book by her, read Nervous System because it's amazing. But yeah, so good. And that is a really good pick for Border. And then a book that is good, I guess, for Secret and Record and is also part of my element, I guess, because it's, you know, music writing. Although this is going to be something that I have to talk about in my um, sort of general wrap up. I have not been reading a lot of music books this year. I don't think I'm going to be able to make a music book wrap up. And I know almost no one cares because almost no one reads music writing, but it is one of my favorite videos to make. So maybe I'll have to have like a mini um, readathon for like a week or two and then read a bunch of music books so I can talk about them. Anyways, we'll see. Um, this is Meet Me in the Bathroom, Rebirth and Rock and Roll in New York City, 2001 to 2011, edited by Lizzie Goodman. And I said edited because it is an oral history and I don't want to diminish her role in it because, oh my God, this must have been work. In here are interviews with everyone who is anyone in the scene, which in case you don't know, it's sort of the Strokes as the major key figure from there, but also LCD sound system, the Brooklyn scene, the yeah, yeah, yeahs, that sort of thing um, that emerged in the early noughts. It's interesting because I definitely grew up listening to that scene. I just wasn't very cognizant of it because sort of my attention was divided between the indie scene and sort of the major, you know, Britney pop music scene. And then when I was a little more cognizant, it was sort of Disney era. <laughs> so I kind of missed it in a teenager -y sort of way because also not like other teenagers, I um, then went straight to like Japan <laughs> and then Korea. It feels like it, my engagement of this was always a bit from an adult looking back into this era and this was definitely it. It's also very engaging. It's like fun to read. It's edited in a way that makes it really, really fun. And I liked that it uses so much of the bloggers who were like really influential and also so many really important music writers that I know from other works. And, and of course, interviews with the bands themselves. And also I love the pictures, like the pictures are great. It's just like so obvious that Lizzie Goodman was like such a big part of this scene as well. The love and attention to detail that she puts in it and the way she structures every conversation is loosely chronological, but it's also thematic, which is great because it sort of illuminates broader themes about this scene. And that's what you want from such a chunky book. Um, if it was only people talking shit, I don't think I would have liked it as much. She structured in a way that it made it worth it that I was reading it. This couldn't have been a documentary, although the series is about to be released, but it's not going to be in the same way because there are some like snappy moments that are so short that you know they are not gonna edit it like this in a documentary, you see what I mean? And so I just really enjoyed it. It's very interesting because having read similar things that detail like a moment or a scene, so much of previous scenes, because they had less history, were so less self-conscious and so less self-aware of, oh, we are creating a moment, oh, we're doing this, we're doing that, this is how we want to look, this is what rock and roll has been, and this is what it will be now. So there is so much more privilege here. The backgrounds are completely different from like other previous rockers. It just feels like less organic in a way that it's not a fault of the scene, it's just how it happened, which I guess it's organic in a different way. I don't know. Also, in 
the year of our Lord 2022, where the mere idea of like these cosmopolitan cities is coming into question because it's so expensive to live there and it's so safe and gentrified now. It's just interesting to see something that is sort of in between the rough past and the polished future sort of thing. Yeah, really enjoyed it. Recommend it if you're a fan of the scene. Uh, really good to dip in and out of. Chapters are relatively short, really well structured, highly recommend. And finally, one of the best books of the year for me. And it was one of the best books of the year, the year it came out for sure. A book that is so profoundly moving and so good. It works for all four prompts, no joke. This is in the Dream House by Carmen Maria Machado. Yes, I know, I'm so late to the party. I should have read this ages ago, but also I am glad that I read it when I read it. This is Carmen Maria Machado's inventive memoir of her time being in an abusive relationship with another woman. It looks not only at how they met, how the relationship went, and how she broke out of it. It also looks at silence regarding abuse in queer relationships. It looks at narrative, at memoirs, at how to engage with trauma and how to engage with self-image. It is just beautifully written. The sort of quote-unquote gimmick is that each chapter is dream house as Deja Vu, Dream House as Apartment in Philadelphia, as Barn in Upstate New York, as Fairy Tale, as um, Choose Your Own Adventure, which is the most brilliant section of this book. The Choose Your Own Adventure one is so arresting. I was already fully in, but when I read that part, I was like, oh, this is the work of a brilliant, brilliant author. And the thing is, that is so raw and vulnerable. You think this was written in just one sitting, bleeding out onto the page, but it is also so structurally sound and so meticulously crafted that you know Carmen Maria Machado spent a long time sort of polishing it and working over it, and the emotional labor of that must have been so just big. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. It's just big, you know? and terrifying. Oh, it's just so good. It made me physically uncomfortable, but in a way that was wonderful. I was just heartbroken and I couldn't stop reading it. I devoured this. And so I am going to reread it at some point. I really highly recommend it. Please check it out if you haven't yet. You probably have because everyone has, <laughs> but if you haven't, you should. Okay, and that's it for now. As I said, this is not everything that I read in November. I actually read some fiction, I know, just a little bit because I needed to finish some stuff and also I read some stuff for the bookshop, including children's books. I did read more nonfiction that I will discuss in a very special video, hopefully coming next week. And then we'll wrap up the year with a bit of like a goals video and not super up-to-date stats, but I still want to like talk about stats, but I think I'm going to film that in December. And then January, roughly speaking, will be sort of wrap ups month. So December wrap up, best nonfiction, best fiction, some other lists that I might make, and then we'll, I promise, catch up with the Overdue Book Club. So little spoiler alert, I am suspending the Overdue Book Club again um, until maybe March or April because I just want to catch up and then we will resume. Let me know if you've read any of these books, if you'd like to read them after hearing me talk about them, and also let me know what you read in Nonfiction November, especially for the prompts, but if you didn't follow any prompts, still let me know what did you read. And that's it. See you next time.